What's up, everybody? Good day. Welcome into First Take. Stephen A. Smith. Hey, I'm hey. Karen. How are we doing? Max doing Kellerman great. is in L.A. Max, how are we? Doing great. I'm in L.A. You know, yeah. it's nice. Why, 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 why? You got to have the smile on your face like that. Why you got to rub it in, man? You why you got to rub it in? You ever notice that people in L.A. smile a lot? Mm. I'm smiling because I'm next to Stephen A. We got each other. Yeah, we got each other. We're going to have to hold on to that. You know, he makes me sick sometimes. Why? You, know, you, know, you, you ain't got to rub it in like that. You, well, you really don't, man, you know? Well, I let, could let, lie to you. Let's move on. That is true. You could lie to me. Yeah. That's all right. He, let's does, move he on. does always tell the truth. Speaking of which, let's do that for Monday Night Football and get into it right now. The Patriots got another step closer to clinching their eighth straight AFC East title with a 30-23 win over the Ravens. Just another day in the office for Tom Brady. What another 400-plus yard effort. Listen to this. TB12 is now 50 in one at home against AFC opponents. Ridiculous since 2007. Max, is Brady the real MVP? No. No, he's still not the MVP, and there's nothing he can do to even really be in the conversation among intelligent people. Look, He's the best player, and, and, and people try to say that there's a difference between value and most valuable and best, and really, fundamentally, there isn't. The best player is the most valuable player. It's re they're really synonymous. Best and value are synonyms in sports, unless the best player simply doesn't play enough. Now, if you miss 25% of your team's games, you have to be better than second place by such an absurd margin. It, had Brady come back to a team that was 0-4 and then went undefeated the rest of the way and trounced everyone in QBR, then I suppose you could make a, a coherent argument for why he should be the MVP. But that's not what happened. He came back to a team that was 3-1. and one. The only loss was with their third string quarterback. And then he has lost the game since then, and he is putting up comparable numbers in terms of the advanced metrics to guys like Dak Prescott who haven't missed a game. No, he is not the MVP. A couple of things that we would need to point out here. Number one, I don't appreciate Max Kellerman bringing in the question my intelligence because I certainly disagree with you. That doesn't mean I'm not intelligent. It means I disagree with you, Professor yes. Kellerman. That's, that's right. Number that's true. One. That's in your case, one. it's just a blind spot. That, there we go. All right, that's number one. Number two, I really got a problem with the fact that your suit is matching your hair right now. I don't, you, you ain't even 50 yet and your hair looks great. I don't know whether it's the color oh, in the studio. Something going on up in that studio so in that light. I'm just saying, it's just the I, truth. I, I like it's, it. it. Your hair looks like great, it. bro. Your hair looks Salt great. And pepper. I You're like not it. even I've been 50 my whole yet. Life for You're this. not even 50. Now let's get back Keep to football. Keep it natural, Max. You, know, you, you look handsome. Exactly. Man, man, man. Listen, man. Listen, I, listen, I don't mind. There's a little gray in my hair, but I'm licensed because I'm approaching 50. This mm. dude is in his early 40s. Come on now. Get it together. Get it together. <laughs> now. Now. Let's get back to you some Tom Brady. Let's get, back, let's get back to some Tom Brady football <laughs> stuff right here. Let's get it, let's get it out the way. You got All right. What you got, Just for Men going on there? Right. What are you talking about? Tom Brady. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to try it. I ain't ashamed to tell you. I ain't ashamed to tell you. Get me started with the road game. All that stuff is coming. Trust me. Trust me, all right? Yo, like, let's get back to some football here. We got Tom Brady, who's 8-1 and one on the year. 8-1. Yep. and one. Nine games, 22 touchdowns, two interceptions. QBR of 89. Who are the teams that he's beaten along the way since he's been back? He's beaten Pittsburgh. Beaten Buffalo. All right. Lost to Seattle, fair enough. You know, beat the Ravens last night. This dude looks like the Tom Brady that we've come to love and respect and revere as arguably the greatest quarterback of this generation. And when I think you look at that, where I think Max is wrong, it's not just because the numbers, the performance, the results buffer and, and validate Tom Brady as a legitimate, bona fide, leading MVP candidate, but let's look at his competition. We had Matt Ryan in there. We saw how he struggled. We had Derek Carr up in there. We saw what just happened in Kansas City. All right, we had Russell Wilson up in there. He had about five interceptions the other day. We had Dak Prescott up in there. We saw what happened to him against Max's Giants. Everyone's human so, this year. So, so listen, here's the deal. When you look at the MVP race, it's not just about what Tom Brady is doing. It's also about what the competition for those league MVP honors are not doing. 
Derek Carr struggled against Kansas City. Like I said, he wet the bed. We know that. He could recover from it and ultimately win. But that was a bad performance. Matt Ryan has been up and down over the last several weeks. Dak Prescott, relatively pedestrian performances throughout the year in terms of yards accumulated, even though the QBR has been impressive. He hasn't had like a bunch of 300-yard games or anything like that. And then we're talking, obviously, about a Russell Wilson and others. And even a big Ben Roethlisberger who isn't in the MVP conversation. You just look at these guys. And then you look at Tom Brady and throwing for over 400 yards last night and completing 68 and a half percent of his passes. Don't tell me that because he was gone for the first four games of this season that this man is completely eradicated and omitted from the yes. MVP. Let me add one more thing. And he had happen. no Gronk and he had no Danny Amendola. That's right. That's yeah, everyone, right. everyone misses guys. And by the way, Brady's had some sleepy performances too. No one is great every single week. Now, Dak Prescott is 11 and 0 this year versus non-Giants teams, and that's okay. I mean, Tom Brady is 4 and 0 in the Super Bowl versus non-Giants oh, teams. That in. I mean, you know that. Is, so, so otherwise, Dak has been amazing all year. And and this idea that well, it's only four games. There are only 16 games in an NFL season. So four games of an NFL season is almost exactly 20 games of an NBA season and 40 games of a baseball season. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it is a whole lot. And for those who point to Joe Montana having won an MVP, having played 13 games, you know, you, you could argue maybe he didn't deserve it. And also, at a certain point, you say, well, maybe 13 games, 14 games you can do it, but 12 is not enough. It's 25% of the season missing. If he trounced everyone, again, in QBR and, and other advanced metrics, and his team was struggling without him. This was a team, remember, Arizona out of the gate. They were supposed to be Super Bowl contenders, and, and the Patriots went and beat them on the road with their second-string quarterback. So it's not like Tom Brady is elevating a bad team to excellence. He is taking an already excellent team and making it even better because he is the greatest quarterback of all time. And game for game, he is the best quarterback in football this season, but he has missed well, too many games. One of the subjects that we're going to visit today is Tony Romo again because you have Cowboy fans clamoring for Tony Romo because they think that the Cowboys would be better with him than without him. Because the fact of the matter is when you look at the offensive line, when you look at Ezekiel Elliott, when you look at what Dez, Terrence Williams, Cole Beasley, Jason Witten, and what these boys are capable of doing offensively, one would argue that the pieces are in place. Whereas with the Patriots, regardless of the fact that they were 3-1 and one before Brady arrived, you look at their defense rife with playmakers, opportunistic defenders, there is no denying that that plays a very pivotal role in the success that they had. What would the Patriots offense be without Tom Brady? Particularly without Gronk and Amendola. When you look at Tom Brady and what he has proven over the course of time to have been able to do and how it's yet again being validated the way that it is being validated, what I am saying is this. Even though I would sit here and put him as the lead for the MVP, I have no problem with somebody who would say, well, you know what, I'm going to go with Carr. I'm going to go with Ryan or somebody else. Or Matthew they play more Stafford. Games. My pro hold on. Or Matthew Stafford. That's right. Absolutely. Matthew Stafford. My issue with Max, my issue with you, is that you are of the mindset that because of the four games missed, he isn't even allowed in the right. conversation. And sure. you're eight and one. The likelihood is that you could end up being 11 and one as a starter with those numbers, with what you're producing, with everyone and their grandmother knowing how pivotal you are to the team's success. Dak Prescott even though he's very pivotal because the quarterback position is the most important position, the fact of the matter is Dak Prescott is not as pivotal to the Cowboys' success as Tom Brady the is, argument is to because the Patriots' someone, success. The argument is because there's someone else on the roster who can approximate what Dak does, or according to some, even do it better. That somehow diminishes Dak's value. Well, Garoppolo was 2-0. Oh. Not about I mean, diminishing know, it's it. It's about Tom size. Brady being elevated. It's, That's it's what it's about. I'm just saying it's not a huge sample size, but in fact, his winning percentage is higher than Tom Brady's. He didn't okay. lose any games. Now, am I, do I think Garoppolo is as good as Tom Brady? No, I don't. I don't think anyone at the moment Tom Brady. is very as good disrespectful. as Tom Brady. But you have to play in the games to have value, and he's missed too many. I don't okay. know how else to say it. Nah.
All right. The most updated odds we have right now from offshore to win the MVP are Tom Brady winning it at two to yeah, one. Listen, listen, people, people are not listening to Max yeah. on this matter. They know that something's wrong with Max when it comes to Tom Brady. MVP so he, he's voters. Trying, he's trying to we hold on to the fact that he said Tom Brady folks, was going to fall off a cliff. That's mm -hmm. what he's trying to hold on to. No, the cliff means he'll be cruising along no, at a I'll high altitude it. until it happens. That doesn't mean that he's... It's like in steady decline. I forgot. And MVP I, I, I voters I right. in, in, in I most team sports are notoriously hey, hey. bad at arriving at the correct conclusion. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. I apologize. I apologize. Okay? <laughs> I just, I, I, your definition of a cliff is different. I apologize. My apology. I just say one more thing. Again, he's 50 and 1 at home against AFC opponents. That stat is 50 and 1. Whew, 50 and 1. That's why he's the greatest of all time. Yeah, and going to be the MVP. The Patriots have the best record in the AFC at 11 and 2 and are tied for the best record overall with Dallas. Stephen A., is it a waste of time to think anyone else is going to come out of the AFC other than New England? I really do feel that way. Mm -hmm. I really do feel that way because I think with Brady, they're a well-oiled machine. And I think that the rest of the AFC, even though they can make it interesting, the team best suited mm -hmm. to go up against them from a disciplined and focused perspective are the Kansas City Chiefs. But you're not going to get me to pick Alex Smith over Tom Brady, especially if they got to go to Foxborough to play. The only shot Kansas City has is if they somehow, some way maneuver themselves in position to get the top seed, and the road to the Super Bowl has to come through Arrowhead Stadium. If Tom Brady has to go to Arrowhead, that would be an entirely different challenge than Kansas City going to Foxborough. If Kansas City goes to Foxborough, as far as I'm concerned, they have no shot. What it if would the be a Steelers miracle. got hot? And if the Steelers got hot, yeah, but again, that secondary up against Tom Brady, I don't like it. Right. I don't like it. Oakland, their defense, their secondary up against Tom Brady, I don't like it. Even though Khalil Mack getting the Tom Brady with Bruce Irvin and those boys, they can make it a bit interesting, but I don't, I'm not sold on them, particularly after I watched them perform against the uh, uh, Kansas City. City Chiefs this last week. And then, of course, don't get me started with anybody from the AFC South. I won't even consider it. And so when you look at it from that perspective, that's how we get to that conclusion. To me, the team with the best shot based on experience, based on not shrinking in the moment, would be the Steelers. The team best in terms of focus, preparation, discipline, and not beating themselves would be Kansas City. But Pittsburgh secondary and Alex Smith in Kansas City to me, eradicate the possibilities of those two teams, which is why I don't think there's really any sense in thinking that somebody's going to knock off New England unless New England loses the number one seed and they have to go on the road. Mm -hmm. If they have to go through, if they get to stay in Foxborough, yeah. they're going back to the Super Bowl. Max? I picked New England to get back to the Super Bowl this year and face Seattle, who I thought would win the Super Bowl, and I'm still not moved off that prediction, although Seattle's struggling, so that means I think the Patriots are still likely to come out of the AFC, but that's different than saying no one else has a shot. They're favorites, but they shouldn't be prohibitive favorites. If you look at Kansas City, if you look at Oakland and the puncher's chance that Derek Carr gives that offense late in games, look at last night's game on the road. The, uh, the Ravens had a chance in the fourth quarter, and if not for one inexplicably sluggish series, right, of downs where they just it, – it was just slow moving and one blown coverage, maybe they win on the road against the Patriots. Now, it's a lot of ifs. I understand that. But they were very much in that game in the fourth quarter, and I don't look at Baltimore as world beaters. Um, so, yes, the Patriots should be favored to come out of the AFC, as I predicted they would before the season started, but – Based on what I'm seeing right now and, and, and based on the quality of the other teams and the specific attributes of the other teams, Stephen A., you mentioned Arrowhead, how difficult the Chiefs are there. But again, the Raiders, even though I think it's a year too early, I think next year they might be Super Bowl favorites, depending on what they do to their defense in the offseason. But even right now, we have consistently seen the Raiders win games that they were really no better than the other team. Well, but they have a special quarterback and an elite receiving core and late in games that makes them extremely dangerous. A couple of things worth pointing out, Max. Number one, did you watch Brady yell at, uh, I think it was Edelman last night when he ran the wrong route and what have you? I mean, this is accountability. This is leadership. This is what you would have liked to have seen from Dak when it came to Dez running those routes that he was running the other day. Let me be clear. The other point that I wanted to point out about Brady is this. Look, against an Eli Manning and against a Ray Lewis, um, I think Eli Manning is like a 1-6 and six or 1-7 and seven in a postseason against those guys. Here's my issue. Where's that Ray Lewis? I understand that Eli Manning might be there, Big Ben, or Derek Carr, for example, 
But where's that Ray Lewis to contend with? You know, I mean, I respect the hell out of Kansas City's defense, no doubt. Eric Berry Peters and the crew with Justin Houston, Tom Bali and those boys. But at the same time, they ain't what Ray Lewis was. They damn sure don't have that on Oakland outside of Khalil Mack. Now, you can sit up there and say Khalil Mack in terms of, you know, what he brings to the table as it pertains to getting to the quarterback. But when I think about Ray Lewis, Max, I'm thinking about the ultimate leader on the football field, the dude capable of galvanizing the troops. When I think about a Khalil Mack, I think about a poorer version of a Lawrence Taylor in terms of a guy that's so incredible. He goes out there and he performs individually. When I think about Ray Lewis, I think about the individual that galvanizes the troops and elevates everybody's game around him to bring out that massive performance and effort from them. I don't see anyone in the AFC that's capable of doing that on the defensive side of the ball. And as a result, how are you going to neutralize Tom Brady? Well, you I can't that's... win without neutralizing Tom Brady against the Patriots. I like the Ray Lewis point. Ray Lewis is, you know, one of the greatest players ever, and you, you want to neutralize one of the greatest players ever, Tom Brady, on the other side. Maybe it's good to have one of the greatest players ever on defense on your side, particularly when that player is a leader of the defense the way Tom Brady is a leader of the offense. I'll point out, though, that against John Elway and the Broncos, since you brought up Lawrence Taylor, who was not the same kind of leader that Ray Lewis was, right. they still beat the Broncos, and LT was the best you know, player well, in right, football I mean, that they, they, year. I mean, listen, wait a minute now. There was the Harry Carsons of the sure. world, callbacks and others of course. on the, on I'm, the I'm squad talking, with them now. No doubt about it. I'm talking right. about the impact that a special player can have okay. on defense. And I, I look at Oakland. Is Oakland going to struggle defensively if they have to play the Patriots? Of course. The Patriots know how to play offense, and Oakland's not very good defensively, although they're getting better. But is it possible that they have, like, a Weapon X? Uh, uh, sorry, Dawkins, you know, on that. But they have a Weapon X on their side that can make some big plays when it matters most? Yeah, they do. They have maybe the most talented defender in the league in Khalil Mack. Okay. All I got to say is it must be nice to be a Boston sports fan. Unbelievable. Yeah, that they, city. yeah, yeah. They they doing it up a little bit. I'm mm. I'm very concerned as In a New Yorker. Don't get no credit. Red Sox, me. the Red <laughs> Sox, the not of damn Patriots, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know who else isn't feeling it right now? LA. The blowout on Sunday may have sealed Jeff Fisher's fate when they played like a middle school offense. You know, we gotta play. I don't care if we out the playoffs or not. I don't I don't care. Just come up, show up, play. That's why we play this game. Show up, play. Not even high school, middle school. Also ahead, does Charles Barkley owe Michael Jordan an apology? Kenny Smith thinks so, but to Stephen A and Max, we get into it. <laughs> 